In this task, we will perform the second step of a supervised classification. In this step, we will first generate and review the spectral signatures of the training areas that we specified in task 3. Next, we will perform the supervised classification and review the results. Let's start with generating the spectral signatures. So click Imagery, Classify Image, Input for Supervised MLC, that's the i.gensig tool. So read the manual for the i.gensig tool to learn what it does and what parameters it expects. When you're done reading that, go back to the required tab and set the following options. For the ground truth training map, select training areas. For the name of the input imagery sub, uh, group, choose TM SAC subgroup. For the subgroup, again choose TM SAC subgroup. The name of the output file is going to be training signatures. Click the run button to execute the tool and if no errors are reported and none are here we're going to close the tool. Next we're going to look at the training signatures file that were created so I'm going to open up Windows Explorer here and go to my lab folder and I'm going to go to my grass data database my Sacramento location, the classification map set, to the group folder, and TMSAC subgroup, subgroup, TMSAC subgroup, SIG, and I'm going to open training signatures in my favorite text editor. So in this case, Notepad. Let's take a few moments to review and discuss the spectral signatures file partially uh, shown here. Once the spectral signature is created, it can be evaluated to see if it looks like a high quality signature. So that is one that has a single bell shaped histogram and a small standard deviation and variances for each band. So the first line displays the text label of the class. In this case, it's AG1. And this represents our agriculture. The second line reports the number of cells in the class. The third line is the mean values per band. The remaining lines are the semi-matrix of band-to-band -band covariance. So here, 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 and here are these lines. Remember that the covariance matrix shows both the variance, so it's the diagonal values shown um, diagonal values for a specific image band as well as how the spectral signatures vary between different image bands. And so those are the off diagonal values. Ideally, each spectral signature will have a single hump or peak value on the diagonal which tends to indicate a high quality spectral signature. So if we look here, we have 1, 1, 2, and then 112, and then 5 and 4. So the obvious hump here is 112.561. If multiple humps were returned, or the standard deviations and variances are very large, that would support the theory that the signature may be comp uh, comprised of more than one land cover type. And so review the remaining classes in the spectral signature file. If any signatures seem to be low quality, take note of them for discussion later. And so let's just take a quick look here. We seem to have uh, a weak single hump here. Uh, we have uh, two well, kind of one hump here, skewed, uh, almost two humps, so we have 35 and 29. For the forest, we have uh, sort of a larger hump. And for urban, uh, we seem to have multiple humps. So this one's probably a little weaker, but again, we're going to take note of those for later. Now, normally we would recreate the training areas to gain a higher quality spectral signature, but for the purposes of learning, we're going to continue as if uh, everything's good and you will be provided with a full set of training areas for the next few steps. So I'm going to close my spectral signatures file. And so a full set of training areas has been provided for you in the lab folder. And so we're going to import the vector training areas and convert them to raster. So we're going to click File, Import Vector Data. There we go. Uh, there it is and uh, common formats input. For the following options, the source type is file, 
the format is Esri shapefile and the file I'm going to browse and in my lab folder there's a spectral sigs training dot shapefile I'm going to click open making sure that it's checked here and making sure that add imported layers in the layer tree is also check, uh, unchecked there we go I'm going to click the import button and then click close I'm going to make sure that everything looks good here and I don't see any errors so now I'm going to click vector map type conversions vector to raster I'm going to set the following parameters then on the required tab the name of the input vector map is spectral sigs training the name for the output raster map is going to be training areas the source of the raster of values is ATTR and on the attributes tabs uh, for the first option we're going to choose class value and for the last one which shows the labels that's going to be the class name on the optional tab I'm going to check allow output files to override existing files since I'm going to output, uh, override the raster uh, training map that I created previously I'm going to click run to execute the tool making sure that I don't see any errors there we go and I'm going to close the tool so the spectral sigs training raster will be added to the map layers list there we go and display to the map display you can see they are all displayed here we're going to use this raster map going forward in this lab so we will first regenerate the spectral signatures file using the full set of training areas then move forward to the supervised classification so we're going to click imagery classify image input for supervised MLC on the required tab for the ground truth training map we are going to choose spectral sigs training well, I'm sorry training areas for the imagery group we're going to choose TM SAC subgroup for the subgroup it's TM SAC subgroup and for the output file it's going to be training signatures I'm going to click the run button if no errors were reported none were I'm going to close the tool and uh, now you should review the newly created spectral signature file so I'm going to do that again real quick so GST 105 lab 6 grass data Sacramento classification group TM SAC subgroup subgroup TM SAC subgroup sig I'm going to open up the training signatures okay so now if we look through we can see that we have ag4 let me go scroll to the top so we have ag1 ag2 ag3 ag4 ag5 and then water1 water2 and so we have multiple um, <clears throat> classes for each type of land cover as I scroll through here you can see them with the spectral signature file review complete we can now move on to the next step of the unsupervised classification which is running the i.maxlike tool so to do that I'm going to click imagery classify image maximum likelihood classification MLC click the manual tab and read the tool manual for the MLC tool so when you're done let's go to back to the required tab and we'll set the following options the name of the imagery group be in TM SAC subgroup and the subgroup once again TM SAC subgroup the tr name of the file containing signatures is training signatures and the name of the raster map holding classification results we are going to name TM SAC sub underscore soup class make sure add created map into the layer tree is checked and then click run to run the MLC tool make sure there are no errors don't see any here and I'm going to click close so in the layer manager I'm going to click map layers so we can see our classified image listed so that's the one up here at the top on the map display you can see the classified image 
If you don't see the image, right click on it and then choose Zoom to selected maps. With the classification completed, we will now move to interpreting the result.